Voice over is an audio visual translation modality usually associated with non fiction genres. This association has been established by taking into account two issues that voice over is the preferred translation modality for audio visual genres, such as documentaries and news, and that translation plays a role in the construction of reality. Both issues will be discussed in this article. First, by studying the concept of simulacrum and hyperreality, and second, by looking at formal features of voiceover in translation regarding its non fictional association and asking how hyperreality is achieved to create the feeling of a non fictional product. Hyperreality The concepts of hyperreality and simulacrum were introduced by Mac Lohans, direct hire, the French sociologist Jean Baudrillard. They are useful tools for both analysis and description in the field of audiovisual translation. Studies because they can help in the understanding of the reception of audiovisual media and its translation in answer to the question of why voiceover is associated with the non fictional genres and how the creation of reality is achieved. Simulcram is not a new concept. It has been known in Western civilization from ancient times and has been studied in areas such as theology, philosophy, and aesthetics in cultures which centered on the image and the power it portrays. William Merrin describes this power. It possesses a remarkable hold over the hearts and minds of humanity, as having the capacity to assume for us the force of that which it represents threatening in the process the very distinction of original and image. In Western societies, this power, as Baudrillard, has long been recognized as a threat to the real since we, through audiovisual media or any media such as books, photography and the constructed image, live in denial of the real and consume reality as a sign. With audiovisual media, the effect is that of a vast process of simulation where coded significatory elements are combined to create a neo reality, which takes all the attributions and strength of reality. Baudrillard even get, goes further, saying that reality is abolished in favor of this neo reality of the model. Voiceover, which is part of the media in the sense that it is a mode of audiovisual translation, has long been associated with the real, and I suggest it is borrowing from bodily art, substituting signs of the real for the real. Voiceover has been successful in assuming the position of the real, as Merrin puts it, eclipsing it today by its excess of truth, by its minute hyper realization of the real. This hyper reality is, therefore, not unreal but quite the opposite. It is an excessive semi realization of the real, which is more real than the real. In translation studies, which from a linguistic perspective achieves the same effect of reconstructed reality, Dawish examines aspects of translation mediated news in the Arab TV station Al Jazeera while in his work. The focus is on the language. This chapter focuses on the formal features of the translation modality voice over. From early academic work on audio visual translation and media studies, voice over has been described as offering an exact and faithful rendering of the original source text. Lucan defined voice over as the faithful translation of original speech, approximately synchronous delivery, used only in the context of monologues, such as an interview response or a series of responses from a single interviewee. The original sound is either reduced entirely or to a low level of audibility. A common practice is to allow the subsequently reduced so that the translated speech takes over. Alternatively, if the translation is recorded as part of the original production, it may follow the original speech exactly. It is true that voiceover is used in TV news or documentaries in order to portray the feeling of authenticity of the discourse contents, 
and that is portrayed by the voice of the speaker. The accent or regional variation, the language or the TV format. As Franco explains, the type of delivery we hear in voiceover translation is an important strategic way of reassuring viewers that what they are being told in their own language is what is being said in the original language. Although it is known that what they will be listening to is in fact only a representation of the original discourse. For authors such as Kilborn, this transfer mode is particularly well suited as a method for the rendering of speeches by foreign politicians, so much that many in the audience would now deem it wholly inappropriate if any other mode were used. Some of the formal features which have been traditionally quoted in translation studies to define voiceover have only been hinted at without any further analysis. In fact, there is still much room for an in-depth study of voiceover, its function, its formal features and the translation of content. Given the fact that the voiceover is the modality most commonly used for translating politicians' speeches and to inform about international news, the lack of attention it has received is surprising from the perspective of audiovisual translation and translation studies in general. Daoish comments, Despite the crucial role in news making, however, translation in the news has thus occupied a very small area of research into translation and communication studies in general. Translation-mediated news production is generally acutely under-researched and particularly not researched at all in Arabic television. Given the length and scope of this chapter, only some of the most salient formal features of voiceover will be analyzed and it is hoped that some interest will be generated to lead to further study. Voiceover's most characteristic feature is, as Shaum explains, the short delay in the translation and the availability of the original soundtrack. And it is precisely this. Hearing a few seconds of the original recording, the voice of the speaker in his original language, that creates the feeling of reality. Darvish 2003 and 2006, Abu Salim 2006 and Darvish and Orero 2006 have looked at the many complex interventions performed in the voiceover of translated texts which are read on top of the original recording. They have established that reporting translated scripts is far from a literal translation exercise and rather approximate and relative. It is subject to various factors that will influence the translation and that affect its level of accuracy such as translator's ideology, dominance, power, political debates and political gains are all factors of critical importance. Hence, given the wide availability of voiceover translation and its use for matters of international politics and security, some academic research should be done in this area. While the content of the translation delivered by voiceover has not been researched so far, Davish, Abu Salam and Davish and Orero have started to look into the interventions and procedures used when translating news with voice-over. This phenomena has received hardly any attention and has been mentioned only in passing by Dali and Avila, though some authors have commented on the accent of the voice who records the translation, no work has been carried out on the actual features of the voice male or female, pitch, accent, etc. There may be certain degree of interest in matching voices for reading the translated text. If the person seeking is a middle-aged man, the voice actor usually matches the genre and the age. Some agencies such as IMS, Independent Media Support Group, are known for trying to match voices according to the expectation of the target audience. Our multilingual production team selected highly experienced artists who were able to convey the tone the film demanded in an appropriate manner to each language. Understanding of the cultural differences is hugely important. 
For example, for the French version, we chose a woman's voice, whereas a male voice were more appropriate for the Turkish video. This indicates that the voice with its many qualifiers may be one more important element to create the feeling of hyper-reality and generate what has been called the constructed reality, which is then reported as non-fiction genre or news as observed by Sigal. News is not what happens, but what someone says has happened or will happen. Linked with the quality of voice and with a higher marginally academic attention is the studies on audiovisual translation, our faucets and ponier observation. They question the adequacy of a documentary on African tribal life with voiceovers in impeccable Oxford English and comment on the use of accents when delivering the voiceover. It would be interesting to look at other countries and find out if voiceover is delivered by a voice talent as is the case of documentaries or by journalists or by the translators. In Spain and Catalonia, voiceover translations are read by voice talents or journalists who are native Catalan or Castilian speakers, hence producing the paradox of wanting to give the impression of authenticity while at the same time the perfect delivery in Catalan or Spanish will show that the person who speaks in a foreign language is not the same as the one who is doing the locution. There is an interesting case in Spanish TV in the program Reds on La 2. In each program there is an interview with an international scientific personality. The director and presenter, Edward Ponset, does the interview in English and the material is then sent to be translated. Once the translation is done and editing is in order, Edward Ponset himself voices in Spanish. The overall effect is that most people think what Ponset translates his own questions and in some occasions people even believe that the interview is live and that there is simultaneous interpretations. This technique is also used at Al Jazeera and has been observed in recent interviews with Russian President Vladimir Putin and the Turkish Prime Minister, a very illustrative example of Merin's explanation of Brodelard's hyper-reality concept, which is not unreal but quite the opposite, an excessive semi realization of the real, which is in fact more real than real. The ability to speak in English and translate himself simultaneously confers upon Punset the attribute of a media demigod. In a recent publication, Zino V. Zinnik, a writer who lends his voice to the BBC, writes, You create an image of ethnic origin by simulating in English, the idiosyncrasies of the other's original tongue. This is especially interesting because one has to be English to have the stereotyped accent of someone French. Such as the TV character Reni, played by Gordon Kay, who impersonated a French accent to portray a French barman in the famous BBC TV series Allo. Allo or the infamous character of Manuel, played by Andrew Sash, in Faulty Towers, the use of the translator's voice may also be used as a disclaimer. According to Darvish, journalists, not translators, do more translations, although interpreters and translators are also expected to do voiceover. He also mentions that this is responsible for the quality of the translations since given the poor translation skills of most journalists and translators as attested by the numerous examples of erroneous translations and the lack of structured methodologies in news translation that ensure accuracy, fairness, truthfulness, objectivity, emphasis in original and neutrality of reported news and transferred information through translated documentaries. Major violations of these principles are inevitable. The accent of the voice may also imply that an indirect translation has been performed 
that is that a non native speaker of english has translated the text and then delivered it which again makes us fall into the hyper reality trap indirect translation for voice over is a common practice in the uk and the arabic speaking tv stations i was often called to translate into english when there was no written text and the translation had to be done from the screen or from the tape as for example in the bbc radio program the history of football where i had to translate kubala and di stefano abu salem links the level of accuracy in translation to native speaker quality the translated script may affect the level of accuracy and validity of the content being translated dawish accentuates the fact that translation journalists and news presenters work as translators delivering bad quality translations he provides numerous examples for the phenomena which is a series of problem that is increasingly causing misinterpretations misunderstandings and communication breakdown across nations and cultures in globalized news media proceeding from the punset example above we can also look at the issue of transparency terminology the invisible translator while translators across countries and modalities are usually invisible which proves what a good job they do there are interesting examples for the complete opposite as in the following case of bin laden and his voice over where the translator is not only acknowledged but signaled when the following item appeared on the screen too The BBC security correspondent Gordon Correra assesses what motivated the latest audio tape attributed to Osama bin Laden and looks for other clues in the message. In second 17 the following insert appeared voice of translator. The news presenter was BBC security correspondent Gordon Correra but a foreign voice delivered the translation as voice over which could be heard in the background. It was believed to be Bin Laden's voice at least that was the feeling given with the few seconds of delay whether it was Bin Laden or not is impossible to assess by the original soundtrack which is quite muffled the translation delivered in the two languages as described by Lucan contributes to the sense of authenticity in the translation and prevents a degree of mistrust from developing It is suggested as a topic for further research to investigate why voice over offers to the audience this reality or authenticity feeling even though we know as is documented in the work of Eliana Franco that the type of delivery we hear in voice over translation is an important strategic way of reassuring viewers that what they are being told in their own language is what is being said by the original language although it is known that what they will be listening to is in fact only an representation of the original discourse while in some countries such as spain and catalonia translators and their associations lobby for the recognition of authorship of their translation in other countries such as in the middle east and more particularly in iraq translators prefer to go unnoticed due to the risk involved in rendering such translations examples are given by the web pages by campagne and sabra human rights watch or in the daily times i expect to be linked at any moment but I have to work to live or i am supporting my husband we have to feed and clothe our baby in iraq alone nine fixers translators and drivers have been killed in 2004 while at least a dozen others have been threatened attacked or injured james dunningen and kadim ali present a chilling account of the role and fate of translators and interpreters in Iraq. Dunningan in the strategy web page gives advice on how to recruit a translator in Iraq. You want your new translator to understand that he has to play by American rules while he's on the payroll. This is why you want an Arab speaking soldier or department of defense civilian to explain this touchy stuff in his native language. to avoid any misunderstanding or unintended insults there are also religious and ethnic differences in iraq that could make things dangerous for an iraqi translator going into the wrong neighborhood so you have to find out if your applicant can deal with it
One of the most silent features of voiceover is that of being associated with non-fiction genres and portraying the feeling of authenticity and faithfulness of the content of translation. As we've seen, voiceover is one more feature to make audiovisual media a construct of reality, which in some extreme cases seems to be more real than reality. After analyzing the concept of simulacrum and hyperreality, we have imported it to the area of audiovisual translation studies in order to understand and explain how voiceover helps to portray the feeling of reality and why it has been traditionally associated with it. The study has only discussed European media. It will be much more interesting to understand and learn about the different variants on voiceover from other cultures such as in the Arab countries, Japan, China or India. Thank you.